Oh, folks, welcome to Revelation Wednesdays. It's Revelation chapter 9. Amen. Almost halfway through again. <laughs> Third time. So this is just powerful stuff. We're going to start at the very end of 8 because it announces 9. So let's watch this. Uh, as I watched, uh, verses 13 and verse 8, chapter 8. As I watched, I heard an, an eagle that was flying in midair call out in a loud voice, Whoa, whoa, whoa to the inhabitants of it because of the trumpet blast about to be sounded by the other three angels. There were the seven trumpets that started in chapter 8. And the first four have been sounded, and we have three more. And they are particularly ominous. Think about it. <laughs> an eagle was was crying out in a human voice, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the trumpet blast about to be sounded by the other three angels. So this is an ominous, and these judgments are powerful and profound and gruesome. And so let's just jump right into nine. They very probably know these. They're very familiar, especially the fifth one. So let's just jump right on in. Hope you're all doing good today. And what? I keep forgetting my water. What is wrong with me? Huh, I figures. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's something wrong with me. I start making a video and I only have my water sitting next to me, crazy person. Uh, that's me talking about myself. The fifth, day, the fifth angel sounded his trumpet and I saw a star that had fallen from the sky to the earth. The star was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. The star's an angel. Um, he was given the key to the shaft of the abyss. When he opened the abyss, smoke rose from it like the smoke from a gigantic furnace. The sun and sky were darkened by the smoke from the abyss. Man, man, he opens, he opens up a, a shaft in the earth into the abyss, the bottomless pit. And this smoke comes out that's so great, it blocks out the sun in the sky. Powerful, powerful smoke. Amen. Right out of the earth, right from the bowels of the earth. And, and verse 3, And out of the smoke, locusts came down upon earth and were given power like that of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Wow. These are the smoke locusts came down and given power like that of scorpions. They have a tail like a scorpion. And we're going to get into more in that. So they come out of they come out of the, the, the abyss. They come out of the they come out of basically the bowels of hell. And come up and they come out of the smoke. And uh, they were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. So at that time, God's going to mark any you know people that become believers at that time. God's going to mark them with a seal. And these, these locusts aren't allowed to touch believers, aren't allowed to touch Christians. They're only allowed to touch people and harm people that are in the world uh, that, that don't know the Lord. Uh, they, were not, uh, they, were not given, they were not given the power to kill them, but only to torment them for five months. And the agony they suffered like, was like that of a sting of a scorpion when it strikes a man. During those days, men will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. This is one of the most profound, I call it the um, a redemptive judgments. Uh, they, they, harm, they have a tail like a scorpion. They sting people like a scorpion. And they harm them for five months. And the people are not allowed to die. It says, during those days, men will seek death but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. This is a powerful, powerful, one of the, if not the most powerful, redemptive judgments in this book. They're allowed to, these scorpions that come out of the abyss are allowed to harm men who don't know the Lord, who don't know Christ. And they sting them and they will suffer for five months. But even if they try to commit suicide, death will elude them. Death, God is going to take the power to commit suicide out of their hands. Their suffering is going to be so great that they're going to want to die. And what's the point of this? Why? What's the point of God not letting these people die? And these people are being judged anyway. What's the point of them not dying? The point is God wants... God knows that some of these people are going to repent, that this judgment is literally going to bring people to Christ. They're going to realize, man, I'm such a fool. Why didn't I listen to God? Why did I have to go through all this punishment? But think about this. Five months suffering, a uh, grievous sore that's from like a, a scorpion from these locusts is a whole lot better than an eternity spent in a lake of fire. These are judgment. These first set of judgments are meant to turn people back to God. Redemptive judgments. They they redeem through punishment, redeem through judgment. Again, I told you it's the carrot and the stick. It's been the it's been the carrot for two thousand years since Jesus came. Come and join Jesus. And now we're reaching the end of time and the carrot's being taken away, and God's got a big stick and he's whomping the crap out of a lot of people, not to kill them, but to bring them to Christ. Bring them to repentance so that they'll turn and receive. 
God's gift of eternal life through his son. It's, it's, it's harsh, but some people just aren't going to wake up until they go through this. But it's, again, God loves every soul, so it's better that they go through this than eternal punishment in a lake of burning sulfur for eternity. Again, this seems harsh, but is this compared to a lake of fire? It's not harsh. This is a walk in the park, a five-month suffering walk in the park. The locusts looked like horses prepared for battle. On their heads, they wore something like crowns of gold, and their faces resembled human faces. Amazing-looking locusts. I mean, John got to see the whole thing here. Their hair was like women's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. Man, that's some rough teeth, buddy. They had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of the wings was like the thundering of many horses rushing into battle. Wow, I mean, powerful. This is going to be like an army of locusts with stingers like scorpions and, and, you know, hair like women's hair, teeth like lion's teeth. I mean, these guys are going to be amazing. I mean, terrifyingly amazing. They had tails like like they had tails and stings like scorpions, and in their tail they had the power to torment people for five months. So I don't know if you get bit once, if you get bit multiple times, but it ain't gonna be no fun going through this judgment. Uh, they had they had king over um, they had as king over them the angel of the abyss, whose name is Ab Abaddon, and in Greek Greek Apollyon. Man, again, you know. God literally is running out of options here. How does he get more people saved? If they won't respond to his love, they're going to they're, they're gonna end up having to respond to his justice and his judgment. And his judgments are just and true, it says later on in Revelation. So it's our choice now. Will we respond to his love, repent, and give our heart now? In a time of peace, the time we're living in now, with all the crazy stuff, there ain't locusts tormenting all of us. <laughs> <laughs> would you like that thing to be open right now september 1st 2021 these things start coming down upon the earth and you don't know christ <laughs> not a good thing so this is the tribulation going on here and it's tribulation for these people but with the with the goal of from tribulation to salvation and again a hard a hard pill here to swallow but better than a lake of fire pill you're better off to suffer for five months than for eternity the first woe is past Two other woes are yet to come. The sixth angel sounded his trumpet, and I heard a voice coming from the horns of the golden altar that is before God. It said to the sixth, the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound to the great river Euphrates. And the four angels who had been kept ready for this very hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. The number of the mounted troops was 200 million. I heard their number. There are, there are four angels right now somewhere in, at the Euphrates River that are supernaturally bound. They're waiting. It says, these four angels who are bound to the great river. Right now, as I'm speaking, there are four angels bound somewhere on the Euphrates River. Someplace God has them prepared. They're waiting for their mission. And their mission is to take 200 million horsemen and wipe out a third of the earth. Again, brutal judgment. And my opinion of this is those that die are those that were never going to come anyway. Those that live are the ones God spares who will, in his foreknowledge, repent. I believe that. And uh, their troop, the number of the mounted troops is 200 million. What, what a terrible judgment to come upon the world. But again, unrepentant hearts. The horses and riders I saw in my vision look like this. Their breastplates were fiery red, dark blue, and yellow as sulfur. The heads of the horses resembled the heads of lions. Can you imagine horses with lions' heads? Amazing. And out of their mouth came fire smoking. So these are fire-breathing horses with lion's head. And they breathe. Out of their mouth came fire, smoke, and sulfur. Comes out of their mouth. Jeez. Man, scary dudes, man. 200 million of these guys. Released to kill a, four, a, a third of the earth. Man. A third of mankind was killed by the three plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur that came out of their mouths. The power of their mouths... Was it, well, the power of the horses was in their mouths and in their tails, for their tails were like snakes having heads which they inflicted injury. Can you imagine? If you miss the fire, smoke, and sulfur coming out of their mouth, it doesn't get you, and the horse is going by you as it goes by you. It's got, it's got one or more snake, snake tails. Because it says right here, listen. It said, the power of the horses was in their mouths and in their tails. In their tails, their tails were like snakes having heads in which they inflicted. So the horse goes by you. He misses you with the fire, smoke, and sulfur. But the, as he gets right, as you get by the horse's 
the horse's rear end, you know, the, the, back, the back flank of the horse, this, this snake is just sitting there ready for you. Man. Now, you've heard all of this terror. You've heard all of this horror. You've heard all of this sorrow in chapter 9. We're only 10 minutes in. Let's get to the heart of the, the heart of the matter is verse 20 and 21. Now listen to this. They've just gone through these terrible judgments. Uh, the, the locust judgment, biting, biting people for five months, and now a, th a third, of third of mankind wiped out by these supernatural horsemen of God. 200 million of them. But listen to the heart. Now this is why God is going to such extremes. Watch this. The rest of mankind that were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands. They said they still did not worship. They they did not stop worshiping de item, worshiping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood, idols that cannot see, hear, or walk. Nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, their sexual morality, and their thefts. I read those two verses and I, it just you just appalled and shocked and grieved all at the same time. I mean, during this time, while this has happened, if someone's still got a Bible and, and someone's about to go through this and say, look, man, repent. Look, I'll show you what's about to happen. Chapter nine, Revelation. First, you see, you see that smoke? Like someone could say to somebody before, just as we're on the cusp of this happening, see that smoke? It's right here in Revelation, uh, chapter nine. And out of the smoke came locusts. And he said, you could tell somebody, if you're, if you're alive at that time and you've been in Revelation, Watch that. You're going to start seeing locusts come out of that. You better get right with God. Or after they get done, someone tells you, look, let's read Revelation 9. We're about to see 200 million horsemen that are going to wipe out a third of the earth. So we got the book here, and you could go right to these while it's actually happening, while it's just about to happen. And yet man's, man's heart is so hard against God that proof, God, absolute proof that the Bible is God's word. As it happens, you could show people in the Bible where it's happening, as it's happening. And people are so hard-hearted, so just so hateful towards God, that the rest of mankind, they're not killed by these plagues, still did not repent of the work of their hands. They just don't want to repent. They will not submit to God, no matter what he does, whether love or justice. He woos them with love, or he punishes them in justice to try and draw them in through sorrow and pain. To repentance they wouldn't respond to his love for 2,000 years now you got a seven-year period of tribulation here trying to get men to repent trying to get men to come and men still won't come gosh you know I, I can't imagine being God up in heaven trying to figure ways to get men saved you know I've loved them for 2,000 years now I'm gonna punish him for a little while even with the knowledge that most of those that still survive these plagues aren't gonna repent aren't gonna turn are just going to harden their hearts more. Let's read it again. The rest of mankind that are killed by these plagues still not repent of the work of their hands. They still they did not stop worshiping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood, idols that cannot see, hear, or walk, nor do they repent of their murders, their magic arts. They're not going to repent also of their murders, their magical arts, their sexual morality, or their theft. These people hate God. They refuse to repent and glorify God. They refuse to repent of their evil deeds. They refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Refuse, refuse, refuse. Even knowing they're wrong, even biblical proof that they're wrong, they have so much hatred and so much loathing for God, they tell God, get bent. I don't want you. I don't want you. I don't care about your place. I don't care about your judgments. I don't care about the Bible. I don't care about Jesus. I don't care about my, I don't care about anything. But what I want, and what I want is to hate you. What I want is to get back at you. What I want is to, is if I could, I would kill you. People would actually kill God. If they could get to God and he could die, they'd kill him. That's how much hatred and loathing they have for the God who put his son on a cross to pay for their sin. <sighs> is Satan good at what he does? Is Lucifer good at twisting the hearts and minds of men into this total darkness? And that's exactly what he's going to do. These are hard words. These are hard chapters. But we need to know. And that's why there's so, you see it all around you, so little repentance, so much darkness all around you, getting darker every day. Why? Because men's hearts are getting harder and harder and harder. Yet, yet the promise is if we'll guard our heart, even in these times, we'll overcome, we'll survive. We'll endure to the end and we'll receive the promise of eternal life. Do you know Christ today? I know I'm probably singing to the choir, speaking to the choir. 
But man, choose to keep your heart. The big lesson of this is keep your heart right with God. Keep a repentant heart before God. Give God your heart and live forever. Live in a perfect paradise, amazing, wonderful, new heavens, new earth forever instead of a lake of fire. <laughs> There's no comparison. You can't compare heaven and all the beauties, new heavens, new earth, millennial reign of Christ to a lake of fire. I mean, this, you can't compare them. You get all of that beauty or all of that sorrow. There are there's no middle ground. There's no Switzerland. There's no neutral territory. You're either in beauty and wonder and joy, or you're in darkness, fire and sorrow and, and torment forever. Those are your two choices. Gosh, that's a hard choice. Beauty and wonder and, and glory and joy forever, or torment and sorrow forever. Hmm. I'm gonna have to think about that and pray about it. <laughs> really? <laughs> why don't you just joy why don't you just choose Christ and choose all the good stuff? All the beautiful, wonderful things he has for you forever. And get to serve him with a pure heart, given a pure heart forever, a pure mind, a pure body for eternity. Instead of going to that terrible place, which God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. I'm diatribing enough here. I just, again, what's God, what can God do? What can he do? And he loves them with a perfect, unrequited, perfect, un. Um, I'm un, I can't remember that unconditional love. He loves them, but justice is his justice has to be served. Men's sins, ha, men's sins have to be dealt with, either in Christ or in themselves. And that's what we're dealing with: men full of sin who will not turn and repent. This is not God's fault, and all these judgments. This is not God's fault. No one had to go through these judgments. The whole world had repented. These two judgments wouldn't have mattered. They probably wouldn't have come if the whole world repented. The whole world turned to Christ. These two judgments wouldn't have had to come. The world would have turned. But men don't want God. And men sure don't want Jesus. And men don't want you and me talking about these things either. <sighs> love you, love you. Can't get enough of you. You see why I'm going through this? We need to know about this. We need to pray. Pray for these people ahead of time. Pray preemptively before. Pray for those people that are going to live through and suffer. Revelation 9. Chapter, verse chapter 9. Pray for the people that are hard-hearted, that are going to be in the future hard-hearted. Pray in front of, send prayers out into the future for the people that are living through this stuff that won't repent. I pray we get a few. We get a few. Love you, love you. Can't get enough of you. Appreciate you. Love you. Keep guarding your heart. Keep guarding your heart and it'll all fall into place. Love you, love you.